It's been said that Apple's DAC dongle that costs just $9.99 is so good and it provides such a high fidelity that you don't actually need to spend any more money for any of these expensive boutique branded DACs. Now stay with me for the next 10 minutes or so and let's put that to the test. Now I know, this one looks just like a small cable adapter. The same as this one, which is actually a little bit bigger even. And this one is a cheap $1.5 to $2 passive adapter. This one, when you connect it to your phone, just routes the analog signal that's already inside of your phone. And it's made by the internal DAC to the 3.5 millimeters output. Apple's adapter, on the other side, is a digital to analog converter. It's used with phones that don't even have internal DACs. So you take this one, it converts digital to analog and powers your headphones, in-ears, earphones, whatever. And I read many comments on the web and also here on my channel that this one is so good that I should definitely test it and maybe we don't even have a need for those more expensive hi-fi dongles. So to do that, I purchased USB-C variant. Just so you know, for you in the US and maybe Western countries, iPhone is not nearly as dominant when you move to like Eastern Europe and even further to the East. Then Android and uh, brands like Samsung, Xiaomi, Huawei, etc. They usually sell much more units, Android phones, than the Apple. So I connected this to my phone, started listening and realized something's wrong here. Everything sounded so thin and depleted of any energy. And even the volume was very, very low. I couldn't crank it enough to power my in-ears, let alone some bigger headphones. So I did a little bit of research and I realized that when you connect this one to the Android phone, its hardware volume, its internal hardware power is limited to the half of its maximum. And it sounds really weak and it really does not have sufficient loudness. At that moment, basically my internal uh, DAC inside of this phone, that's some 350 US dollars on the market, at least it was when I bought it, it's Xiaomi 11 Lite 5G, something like that, actually sounds better than this dongle. And as far as I could see, the only solution to make this DAC work as it should, as it's supposed to work, as it would work with your iPhones, is to download USB Audio Player Pro. And I've got that one here. I bought it, it's $10 also for the app. And this app can recognize that you are attaching an external USB DAC. It can take full control over it and bypass stupid Android OS that's really not oriented towards high quality audiophile gear. With this particular DAC especially it's problematic because it locks away half of your power and energy and it just sounds rubbish. So when I actually started using that player, first of all, yes, you do have much more power there and I could crank my in-ears to sound much louder than I actually ever needed to. But not only that, the thing is not only about the power, there is something else happening there because everything immediately sounded much cleaner and more energetic and crisper, even at lower volume levels. So this DAC simply doesn't work well with OS operating system. But when you use that app that I've just mentioned, that grants you direct access to the DAC, then you can actually experience what iPhone users hear when you're using this DAC. The sound was crisp, clean, very detailed. And uh, if I would to complain about something, it would be that it sounds kind of analytical. There is not much weight in the baseline and some sort of warmth and upper registers can sound a little bit sharp and aggressive. 
But other than that, really speedy sounding, dynamic sounding and like crisp sounding, as I said. So to find out how it actually fares against these pricier decks, I went on and first compared it to 7 Hertz 71 deck. It's a 35 US dollars deck, so it's 3.5 times more expensive than Apple's one here. And when I compare them inside of that USB audio player Pro that unleashes Apple's DAC fully, these two sounded completely the same. I swear to you, I often explain and, and describe sound of a DAC into details, but these two, I could not differentiate them inside of that app. Everything I said about Apple's dongle is true for this one too. It's just 3.5 times pricier. So if you're an Apple user, no need to think about this one. But if you're an Android user, everywhere else outside of that app, where you actually do not have the access, direct access to this Apple deck dongle, 7 Hertz here sounds much more powerful and it sounds fuller and juicier and a little bit darker up top, but Apple's DAC just sounds thin and weak and completely flat. So yes, its internal hardware can produce sound that can fully match this pricier one, but only if you use it on an Apple device or with USB audio player Pro. Outside of this situation, on any other Android phone, and I tried several of them, it's just rubbish and don't even think about it. But let's keep it in that good environment, with that one player that works well with it on Android phones, and then compare it to some pricier decks. So I took all of these, I compared it, but to keep this video shorter than it needs to be, I'll take Beam 3 Pro here as an average 150 US dollars DAC. Does Apple's DAC dongle sound equally good as this much, much pricier, like 15 times pricier DAC and a little bit bigger too, drains more energy also. This one, as I've explained, sounds sharp and a little bit analytical and thin without much base weight and base authority. It is very sharp and it is clear and crisp sounding, but it's lean and high frequency oriented. On the other hand, when you move to Beam 3 Pro, you immediately notice heavier bass line. For example, I was listening to this song, great song by the way, greatly recorded too, and these lower bassy notes sounded much fuller and lusher to this deck. But not only that, everything had more body and, and more core. It, it felt like tones are more realistic and more palpable in air, while through Apple's deck, they sounded thinner, sharper, and more digital. Also, one thing that I've noticed is at one moment, it's close to the beginning of the song, somebody from the audience yells, you know, because that's a live recording. Through the da uh, Apple's DAC dongle, you just hear that somebody is yelling at a lower volume than main musicians, but you cannot really say where does that come from. With Beam 3 Pro, you definitely notice that, that that's some far away sound. There's much more feeling of depth because these uh, echoes from that room where it was recorded and these spatial cues that our brain can accept and process are saying to us, yeah, that's something that's deeper in that room, that space, that hole, and it sounds a little bit echoey and it has reverb and I can definitely feel that it's coming from somewhere deep far away from the musicians. It's separated from them spatially. And you cannot tell that not nearly as good by using Apple's deck dongle. Without further ado, I want to make a conclusion here. Apple's deck dongle for $9.99 is a pretty good, detailed, energetic, 
crisp and clear sounding device once you can actually access its hardware volume control. And that means either by using Apple devices that this DAC was naturally made for, or by using USB Audio Player Pro and accessing to those from Android phone. In any other situation, just watching YouTube using uh, native apps of maybe Spotify, Tidal, or anything like that, or your default factory player on, on your phone, this will sound really bad. Don't do that. But once you actually use it properly, it can completely match the 35 US dollars 7 Hz 71. 3.5 times the price, I cannot distinguish these two. That's a pretty good deal. But something like Moondrop Dawn 79 already sounds a little bit airier, a little bit better. Something like Beam 3 Pro here sounds considerably fuller and more spacious and it pinpoints and separates instruments better. So yeah, this is a pretty good sounding 999 dongle. And if you are using Apple phone, if you want to have a serious upgrade, think about $100 DAX or above. And uh, where did this myth about this one sounding perfectly great, like high-end DAX came from? Probably from uh, the fact that when you actually uh, do some set of measurements on it, it measures really cleanly and nicely. But that's just a common misconception because those really cannot tell you the full story about how something sounds. So that would be all for today, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope that this video satisfied your curiosity about Apple's DAC dongle. And if you liked it, thumbs up, comment down below the video and see you next time. Bye.